So this is the unit circle. All right. What it does is it gives you the values of sine and cosine uh, for all of these special angles uh, between zero and two pi. Um, so a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, is the coordinates. The x coordinate gives you the cosine of the function. The y coordinate gives you the sine of the function. Alphabetical order, okay, x, y, cosine, sine. C comes before s, if that helps you remember which one's which. Okay, um, there are a couple of reasons why I had you produce this the way that I had you produce it. Number one is for you to realize, and some of you know this from last year, really all you have to do is get a grip on the first quadrant, and then the other three quadrants are direct relations to that because of reference angles. That's why I had you take those triangles and put them each in the quadrants to realize that five pi over six creates the exact same triangle as pi over six. It's just since five pi over six in the second quadrant, it has a negative x coordinate. Okay, that's literally all you have to understand about this. So this is one reason why radians are actually nicer when you're having to come up with exact values because all of your over six angles, pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, 11 pi over six, if I picked one that wasn't on the unit circle, for example, uh, 19 pi over six, okay, you don't actually need to know specifically what 19 pi over six looks like you just need to realize, oh, it's over six, so it's gonna be square root three over two, one half, then somebody want to know sine or cosine. You do need to know what quadrant that would uh, land in. So 19 pi over six, that's a little bit more than three. So three pi would be here, so it's in the third quadrant. So you would know that both these coordinates are negative. Okay? That's the logic that I go through when I have to figure out, well, what is the value of sine for this angle, or what's the value of tangent for this angle? Um, these points on the axes, just think about it in terms of basic geometry. If the radius of the circle is one, then this point over here on the positive x axis is one zero. Forget the trig for a minute, that's just what that coordinate is. Okay, zero, one, negative one, zero, and zero, negative one. Um, there's something else I was going to point out. Oh, tangent. Tangent. Now, the unit circle doesn't give you explicitly the value for tangent, but there are a couple of different ways you can look at it. Tangent is the opposite of the adjacent. Well, if you stick a triangle in here, the opposite is the y coordinate. Over the adjacent is the x coordinate. So you can look at it as y over x, or you can look at it as sine over cosine. Okay? Either way you want to look at it, that's how you figure out the tangent for an angle y over x or sine over cosine. Um, I think that's all I wanted to mention. Does anybody have anything special that you do or remember for figuring out angles and stuff using the unit circle? Okay, I was, I'm always interested to see what people do because everybody has something just a little bit different that they remember. Um, but as far as the positive and negatives, again, just go back to basic geometry, first quadrant. Both x and y are positive. Second quadrant, x is negative. Third quadrant, both are negative. Fourth quadrant, positive x, negative y. All right? Um, so just keep those patterns in mind. So let's evaluate some trig ratios using the unit circle. So keep your unit circle there. All right? Now my goal is that you would be able to do this without referencing your unit circle. Um, if you're planning on taking AP calculus with me, You've got to know this stuff without looking at your unit circle. You can use it as a reference tool right now, but you should be kind of weaning yourself from it as we go along um, so that you can do it without having to look at it. All right, so if I ask you to find the values of sine, cosine, and tangent of theta, I'm going to try and get out of the habit of just saying sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. And you may say, well, that's really nitpicky. I do that because if I don't say it, if we're not in the habit of thinking about it, we think that sine, cosine, and tangent mean something without an angle. 
They mean nothing without an angle. They have to have an angle. Because what they are, they are operations. Sine of 30 degrees means you have a triangle with an angle of 30 degrees, and you're finding the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse side. That's what sine truly means. So it means nothing without an angle attached to it. Okay? So if I want to know sine, cosine, sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta when theta is pi over 3, that's in your first quadrant. You've actually already got this on your table, but we're going to do it just for, um, I don't really remember what else I was going to talk about. <clears throat> okay, sine of pi over 3 would be uh, the square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And the tangent of pi over 3, we put the sine over the cosine. So that's the square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Okay, I know y'all like to do that box thing or whatever. Okay, but I want you to learn that that's keep the top the same, flip the bottom over and multiply. So the tangent of pi over 3 is equal to the square root. Once you get that written out, you need to go back to the units real quick for me because I need to be able to count. <clears throat> I was going to talk about Square root theory between the times two. Okay, so the way that I remember, um, pi over 4 is really, really easy. Okay, pi over 4 uh, is very easy to remember because sine and cosine are both square root 2 over 2. But 30 and 60, or pi over 6 and pi over 3, a lot of people will get those mixed up. Here's how I remember it. And if you ever watch me when I'm going through these examples, I kind of close my eyes because I'm visualizing geometrically the fact that 30 degrees is a more shallow angle. So it has more um, of a, it has a larger x coordinate than a y coordinate. Um, so just for reference sake, you don't need to memorize this, but you do need to know that the square root of 3 divided by 2 is bigger than 1 half. Okay? It's about 0.866. So it is bigger than 1 half. So 30 degrees has a bigger x coordinate than its y coordinate. So I know that it's x or it's cosine, but pi over 6 is bigger than pi over 2 60 degrees is a steeper angle, so it has a bigger y coordinate. So the sine of 60 but the sine of pi 3 is square root 3 over 2, and the cosine is 1 half. Okay? That's kind of what I do. I, I try and visualize the, the width versus the height okay? to keep those two straight in my head. That's how I do it. Some people just memorize it. If that works for you, great. I like to have something concrete to kind of fix it. Okay, 135 degrees. Okay, sine, cosine, and tangent of 135 degrees. So you can of course find 135 degrees on your unit circle, but I'm going to do it this way. Okay, I'm going to say, well, 135 degrees has a reference angle of 45 degrees. So I know that my sine and cosine are square root 2 over 2. I'm going to go back and fix the sine here in a second, the S-I-G-N. And tangent of 135 degrees, if I put the square root of 2 over 2 over the square root of 2 over 2, they're the exact same expression, so that's going to give me 1. Okay? But, i got to remember, alright, 135 is in the second quadrant, because it's less than 180 degrees. So that means my x coordinate is negative, so my cosine is negative, my y coordinate is positive in the second quadrant, so sine stays positive, and then tangent, if I put those two over each other, one of them is negative, so my tangent is going to be negative as well. Okay, that's kind of the process that I go through. Okay, 210 degrees. 210 degrees. That is in the third quadrant with a reference angle of 30 degrees. So in the third quadrant, sine and cosine are both going to be negative. Because in the third quadrant, your x is negative and your y is negative. 
the sine of 30 degrees is one half, so the sine of 210 will be negative one half. The cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, so the cosine of 210 will be negative square root of 3 over 2, because I'm in the third quadrant. And then when I put the sine over the cosine, I've got negative one half over negative square root of 3 over 2, keep the top the same, flip the bottom over and multiply. The twos cancel, negative times a negative, gives a positive, that's one over the square root of three, we don't leave square roots in the bottom, so we need to rationalize. So the tangent ends up being the square root of three, or two. So now, at this point, we have produced the three values of tangent. Okay, tangent is either going to be the square root of three, one, or it's going to be square root three over three, um, not including the points on the axes. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but those are your three possibilities for tangent. So you can just use that work from this point on. Okay, pi over six, 11 pi over six. That would be in the fourth quadrant because 12 pi over six would be two pi, so we're just short of that. So we are in the fourth quadrant, positive x, negative y. So the sine of 11 pi over 6 would be negative 1 half. The cosine of 11 pi over 6 would be positive square root 3 over 2. And the tangent of 11 pi over 6 would be negative square root 3 over 3. Using my work from what I just did, 210 has a reference angle of 30 degrees or pi over 6. So exact same values, I just have to manipulate the, manipulate the signs because I'm in a different quadrant. Now, what if we have a negative angle? Different people approach it in different ways. Um, the easiest way, if you're looking at your unit circle to find a negative angle, is to go to that positive angle, go to positive pi over 4, and you go directly below it. You go to positive pi over 4, and you go directly below it. Or if it was below the x-axis, then you go directly above it. Okay? Um, so negative pi over 4 is the same thing as 7 pi over 4. Um, but really, all you have to zone in on the fact is that it is uh, a pi over 4 angle. So that gives us square root 2 over 2, but negative pi over 4 is in the fourth quadrant. So sine is going to be negative. Cosine is going to be positive. And tangent, when they have opposite signs, tangent is negative 1. Yes, sir. I'm just going back to when we were doing coterminal angles and reference angles. I'm just placing it in the, in the circle. Where negative pi over 4 is? Two ways of looking at it, okay? The easiest way is to find positive pi over 4 and go directly below it. Or just the first. Uh -huh. Yeah. You've got to know the first quadrant. If you know the first quadrant, you're good, you're good from there. Jake, what was your question? Yes. Sine is always the y coordinate, cosine is always the x coordinate. Mm -hmm. All right, one more, negative 240 degrees. Again, you've got two options here. Let me actually draw this one out. Negative 240, well, negative 180 is right here. Uh, 240 would be about right here because it's not quite negative 270. Or what I was saying before is you can go to positive 240. You know, positive 240 is down here in the third quadrant and then you go directly above it, that is negative 240, okay? So two different ways of looking at it. Uh, okay, so that has a reference angle of 60. So the sine of 60 degrees is square root 3 over 2. We're in the second quadrant, so that is positive. Cosine of negative 240 is 1 half. In the second quadrant, x coordinates are negative. 
and then tangent 